Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the week beginning the 28th of October 2013. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up this week's Steam deals. These deals will run through to next Monday, which would be Monday the 4th of November, and everything ticks over at 10 a.m. Pacific. So if you do wish to grab them, you'll have to grab them this week. Let's see if any of them are any good. Starting with Bad Rats. Nope. Nope. 90% off. Still not worth it. 50 cents, 40 euros, 30 pence. Not even worth it for the worst of enemies. <laughs> if you don't know what Bad Rats is, I did a video on Bad Rats. It is an absolutely awful physics-based puzzle game. It is dreadful in every possible respect. And is also highly offensive, strangely enough. The worst thing about it is the game doesn't do physics properly, so you don't get predictable responses. So beating the actual levels are, for the most part, luck more so than anything else, because doing the same thing multiple times will result in different things happening, which is not what you're supposed to be seeing from a physics-based puzzle game. It is legendary in its badness. It is regarded as one of the worst games on Steam, and rightfully so. It's dreadful. Do not touch with a 10-foot barge pole. Death Rally, 75% off. That is uh, $2.50, 2 euros, 25, and 2 pounds. For this price, maybe, just maybe. At the original price, it certainly wasn't worth it, in my honest opinion. It was a fairly weak reinterpretation of Duke Nukem's Death Rally, which was an old DOS game back in the day. And it seemed like this game was designed for mobile devices. And indeed, it was released on mobile devices, so it is highly likely that that was the case. It's, for the most part, a fairly dull top-down arcade racer with occasional weapons and things like that. For the price, it's maybe worth a little bit of a dabble, especially if you enjoyed old games like Micro Machines or the original Death Rally, which unfortunately ended up being significantly better than this. The main problem the game's got is it was clearly designed for mobile devices in terms of the length of the racers. They can be beaten in, like, a minute. It's designed for being played on the toilet, not on a PC. And as a result, you never really get into the groove. It's highly unsatisfying. Not to mention the fact that it's graphically not that impressive and the weapons feel like toys which is not what you were looking for here, I would imagine. It's okay for $2.50, but I'd never recommend it at full price, so just bear that in mind. Go Home Dinosaurs, 75% off, taking it down to $2.50, €2.50, and £1.75. This is the premier dinosaur barbecue defense simulator, as it turns out. And this is a game about defending your barbecue from dinosaurs, and you are chipmunks, moles, Prairie dogs, I don't even know what they are. It's a rather silly and cutesy tower defense game with a couple of interesting arcadey gimmicks. It is nothing to write home about, but it is decent at what it does. I can't really argue with the kind of gameplay that it presents. It knows what it is, it's fairly simplistic, it feels a bit like a mobile game as well, but it's actually surprisingly fun. And if you're looking for a little bit of a casual tower defense with some interesting arcadey elements, then this is not a bad choice. And there aren't all that many tower defense games that focus on prancing Triceratops, so I guess that's a selling point. God Mode, 50% off, taking it down to $5, 5 euros in tier 1, 349 in tier 2, and £3.49. This is one of the worst games that I've played this year, which is impressive considering that this is a year that contained Ride to Hell Retribution as well as Day One Gary's Incident. It is not as bad as those games, but it is highly dull regardless. It's a third-person co-op shooter that involves shooting through wave after wave after wave of enemies set in a sort of mythical environment, and you hold the button down and that's about it. The only thing this game's got going for it is that each individual arena has a different condition attached to it, which at least keeps it a little bit fresh. But everything about this game and the follow-up, which is R.I.P.D. the game, which actually is even worse, if you can believe that, is just dull, it is contrived, it is shockingly lacking in imagination, and that would be okay if it were mechanically sound, but it's not. The gunplay is no fun, the combat is no fun, there are barely any options to it whatsoever. It simply involves dodge rolling and holding the button down. Please don't. I mean, just because you see co-op, there are plenty of other co-op options that are far, far better. Just buy Killing Floor, seriously, and, or anything, but not God Mode. No, no, no. Rock of Ages, 50% off, takes it down to $5, 5 euros at £3.49. 
fun game, actually. Very fun game by Ace Team, the guys that did Xenoclash. This is a better game than either of the Xenoclashes, in my honest opinion. It is a historical bowling simulator. That's probably the best way to describe it anyway. And it involves navigating a large boulder through a series of obstacles that the other guy is building in order to smash the gate of the castle. Once you get in there, you can squash an important historical figure who seems to be represented in a Monty Python-esque kind of way. It is incredibly unique and actually surprisingly fun, and I would strongly recommend that you have a look at it. Seriously, it is, it's a good laugh. It really is. I like bowling. I like slaughtering historical figures. I mean, it's an ideal combination, really. Slam Bolt Scrappers, 75% off. That takes it down at $2.50, 2 euros 50 and £1.75. Alright, uh, it's okay. Like, I like the concept behind it, and it's reasonably fun to play. I feel the production values are rather lax, to say the least. It is definitely not a good-looking game by any stretch. But it's got a pretty good concept behind it, and that makes it rather enjoyable. It's a rather crazy twist on the idea of games like Columns. You have to match colors together in order to make large weapon emplacements, which can then fire at the opposition. Also, you happen to be a character that can fly around with a jetpack and engage in close combat and things like that. The main problem I've got with this game, aside from the fact that it does get a little bit dull after a while and the campaign is not that exciting, so it's really more of a multiplayer focused title than anything else, is the fact that you do need to get a 360 controller in order to play this game properly. It does not work that well with the keyboard and mouse at all. Also bear in mind that the co-op is local only, so that means on the same computer, not local area network, and certainly not online. Droplets, 50% off. That is $2.49, €2.49, and £1.99. So this is a puzzle game that combines elements like Match 3 with Tetris and games like Pipe Dream. So think about the minigame from Bioshock where you had to hack things with the water flowing through the pipes. It's kind of like that, only a lot more complicated. And it's surprisingly fun. However, this is the old version. The new version was brought out for Windows Phone by the name of Droplet Delight, which is far, far better, as far as I'm concerned. And this is a very old title now, to the point where it's stuck in 4x3 resolution, which is not that ideal. It's a decent bit of casual puzzle fun, if that's actually what you're looking for. But aside from that, you can safely give this one a miss. Edna and Harvey, Harvey's New Eyes. Yeah, I'm deadly serious. 80% off, that's four dollars, four euros, and three pounds, 19. So this is more of a traditional point and click by Daedalic, who have done quite a few decent games, frankly. Lately, they've been specializing in point and clicks with Deponia being one of them, of course, as well as the other two Deponia games and the Dark Eye Chains of Satnav, which I talked about last week and said was actually a very good point and click. This one, not quite as good, but it does have some interesting humor, I've got to say. The graphic style is very unique. It's not going to aesthetically appeal to everybody, honestly, but I like the fact that it does have a unique style all of its own. Voice acting's pretty weak in this one, but the humor, if you're into particularly dark stuff, is actually not too shabby. Gameplay-wise, there's nothing to write home about. It doesn't really innovate or change anything about the point-and-click formula, but if you're into traditional point-and-clicks, the Germans have been making quite a few good ones lately. Admittedly, I'd still say the Deponia games from the same developer are better than this one, as is Chains of Satnav, but for that price, it might be worth having a look at if you want something a little bit twisted. Looks like a kid's game, clearly is not suitable for kids. Ghostmaster, 75% off, $1.24, €1.24, and 74 pence. Unequivocally, yes, you should buy this one, but it has also been on sale approximately 47,000 times before, so that is worth bearing in mind. This is a game about scaring people. It almost reminds me a little bit of Dungeon Keeper, but not quite. And you're able to use various ghosts and their supernatural powers to complete various scenarios, which involve scaring the hell out of most people. This game is actually a ton of fun, and it was criminally overlooked. I think that it's definitely worth playing, especially for this price. But of course, it has been this price for the last 5,000 years. It's an old one as well, actually, surprisingly so. It actually came out in 2003, if you can believe that. It is 10 years old now. But if you enjoyed the thematic elements of Evil Genius or, say, Dungeon Keeper, then I think you should give this one a try. 
Guncraft, 50% off, taking it down to $7.49, 7 euros and 5 99 Alright, this was a game that was absolutely plagued by release issues, huge amounts of them. We're talking about the idea that it doesn't even have video options, the menus are a complete mess, and the game performs really badly, which is shocking considering it looks hideous. Yeah, it's another one of those games that borrowed the whole Minecraft aesthetic, but they decided to put a shooter in there instead. Now, it seems like it's got a bit of promise to it. It's got a bunch of crafting in it, which allows you to design weapons. It's got full voxel destruction and things like that. So that sounds good in theory, but really, it is an absolute mess, and unfortunately, the developers have been deleting and locking threads from the Steam forums that indicate this is the case. It's actually worse than Ace of Spades, which is impressive because the recent release of Ace of Spades was god-awful. This, I'm afraid, is gonna have to be an avoid. Maybe they will fix the issues, but frankly, if you launch in that state, then it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get people to come back to you. You've lost their trust by that point. Good luck regaining it. King's Bounty, 75% off for the Platinum Edition, which takes it down to $8.74, €7.49 and £7.49. We've also got Warriors of the North for $7.49 at €7 or £6.24. Okay, so the latest one is Warriors of the North, which is an entirely separate campaign. And then you've got the Platinum Edition, which has the original. It also has Armored Princess and Crossworlds, which was an expansion to Armored Princess. They're all pretty much the same. Obviously, they do a few different things. If you want to start off with King's bounty you've never played them before then get the platinum edition and start with the original and then keep going from there if you're even remotely concerned about the story or anything like that the best way to describe king's bounty would be to say that it's an rpg with hex-based strategic battles that's really hard to say you have no idea that was like 10 takes on that line anyway it plays a little bit like Heroes of Might and Magic, and it should, because that's where Home came from in the first place. The original King's Bounty came out a long time ago, and that's what Heroes of Might and Magic ended up being based on. However, that game became more of a strategy game. In this particular game, you have one hero, and it's focused around wandering the world, collecting monsters, building up an army, completing quests, and getting items and things like that. And it is just ridiculously good at it. Not only is the game absolutely gorgeous, and that continues to improve as the series goes along, but it is a massive time vampire. It will just suck hours of your life away. It's just so awesome to be able to explore the world and collect new monsters and level yourself up and all that kind of stuff. It reminds me of some of the more engrossing elements of Heroes of Might and Magic, but without all the castle management and things like that in the game. You focus on your hero and its development and the army that that hero builds up. Warriors of the North is the latest version of it. If you happen to already have King's Bounty, then I think you probably know what's coming when it comes to this title. They iterate on this series very much so. Armored Princess is considered by many people to be the best of the series because it made significant enough leaps from the original while still keeping the flavor of the original intact. Warriors of the North is not bad. The problem is that when it came out, it was a little bit too expensive, as you can tell. You look at that, 75% off will still only take it down to $7.49. So you're looking at a $30 or so game there. And most people said, look, this should have been an expansion and it's not worth the cost. Regardless though, it is good. And they're all good. Every last one of them is good. And you should be looking at them because they are phenomenal fun. And finally, for Halloween, it is Zombie Pirates. 75% off, $3.74, €3.24 and £2.49. This is a safe skip. It's a fairly old title, and frankly, it's not all that interesting. It's a basic arcade strategy game where you spawn a bunch of ships in order to fight off zombie pirates in various missions, and you can occasionally use items in order to try and get ahead. It is so simplistic, it's not even funny. And you could maybe call it kind of like a tower defense game, but really, it lacks all the strategy involved in that, so that's not all that impressive either. It's more often than not just a frustrating clickathon, which involves collecting stuff that's dropped in the ocean more so than anything else. Yeah, it's 
it's not worth it, and it's an old game that's in 4x3. It doesn't look particularly great. It didn't look particularly great back then either. So you're not missing anything if you decide not to pick this one up. All right, folks, there you go. That's your weekly sales roundup. And just a reminder, if anything pops up on the sale later on and you didn't notice it in this video, that's because I can't see the future. This video was recorded on Monday. If anything's been added since this recording, it will not be included in this particular show. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And I'll see you next time.